What hey, you call hey, welcome to Half a Clue Movie Review. I am your host, Ron. Ron, yes, Ron, yeah. and you are Philip. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Hey, so here we talk about dun, 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 the Oscar, Oscar. 20, yeah. <laughs> Best Documentary Feature Film Category. That was such a choppy intro. That was terrible. I know, perfect. We'll keep it in. We're moving on. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> What's it called? So, yeah, we're going to cover another Oscar episode today. It, the films that we're going to cover that are nominated are Summer of Soul, Lee, Ascension. <laughs> Don't do that in the mic. Don't do that. <laughs> Attica. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. And Writing with the Fire. With Fire. With Fire. Yeah. With uh, Fire, I'm excited. Um, I'm, I'm excited. Oh, Fire, I'm excited. That's not a song. Oh, I, I was going to say. Up. Okay, that's... <laughs> yeah, I couldn't <laughs> You would not have made it to the Summer of Soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh they would you not, don't know. They wouldn't let you on the stage. They would have been like, whoa, the Asian <laughs> guy doing... Because remember that one point in the documentary, he's a white guy doing drums? It's not <laughs> possible. <laughs> Asian guy saying, fire, dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'd kick you right out. <laughs> yeah. they, would, they would allow me for like 10 seconds out of sheer curiosity. Yeah. And then everyone just boo you off like, yeah, just like <laughs> boo me, boo boo. And then um, then you know they'd be like, and then someone would just yeah, tell me. like out of the, like if you're in the Apollo Theater, they'd boo you off the stage. Yeah. <laughs> you're out of here. Okay, so uh, yeah, we're starting off with Summer of Soul, which is leading number one in the Gold Derby odds and probably the favorite to win. It would have been the Disney Plus uh, fucking documentary about the Thailand rescue, but they always do that. They always snub the favorite to win. All right, Summer Soul, or When the Revolution Could Not Be Televised, is Revolution a documentary... Will not be televised. <laughs> ...is a documentary directed by Amir Questlove Thompson. This podcast will not be televised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you play it on your YouTube app on the TV. <laughs> Don't worry, Spotify's happening. I know I've been saying that forever. It'll happen, it'll happen. Yeah, it'll happen. Okay, so... Amir, okay, so Summer of Soul, or When the Revolution Cannot Happen, covers the 1969 Harlem Cultural Festival, which was held at the Matt Morris Park, which is now known as the Marcus Gra Gravy Park in Harlem, which I've been to. It's pretty cool. Um, and for the longest time, this uh, festival just, even though it happened, it was recorded, the footage for the festival was that, dormant for 50 fucking years. There are thousands and thousands of people there. It's, yeah. It, it feels like... Yeah, like I'd never heard of it. I, I felt like this is something like it, like you know, watching the the documentary and everything. It feels like yeah, this was like a pretty big, momentous occasion, and then it just got buried. Yeah, and, and I guess to and the Woodstock, be, Woodstock happened, and everyone talks about Woodstock. And I get yeah. why, like culturally, why let's be let's like the racial thing is a big thing. Let's yeah, it yeah. is. I was gonna say like uh, understandably for the time it was the '60s, you know, 1969. There, at the same time, there was other stuff they do address, like how like the moon landing was happening at the same time. Uh, Woodstock was happening. There's a lot going on. The 60s was a very dense decade, so there's a lot of stuff happening. But at the same time, yeah, honestly, because it was a you know largely black um, led show and everything, it just wasn't getting any real kind of airtime or coverage because people were like, oh, it's the black Woodstock whatever <laughs> they just kind yeah, of just fucked up. brush it and, off and they address yeah. that in the thing near yeah. the end particularly um yeah so for me it was like really cool to decide because a lot of these are my favorite artists um whether it's like nina simone the fifth dimension i was like yeah the fifth dimension's there and when they was like what it's like uh what you it's like what you call you or something like that right, okay let me i'm, I'm gonna pull up the actual thing and gladys knight's cool that's it yeah. called um but the oh the big one for me stevie wonder that's like, nah, I, I like stevie wonder he's cool He's cool. Wonder's cool. Yeah. yeah. BB, oh, BB <laughs> King was there too. Yeah. I remember yeah. BB King. What a boss. Oh, it's called. Oh, but it was a, uh, what's oh, called? David Ruffin, who did My Girl. Oh, okay. My, my Girl. <laughs> I was like, yeah. That was Not cool. Lie. I was probably most excited to see BB King. <laughs> no, BB King's super dope, but he was only there for like half a second. Yeah. He was in the documentary. Yeah. It was very quick. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Even, um, what's and Nina, Nina Simone's, uh, what's called? Are You Ready? It was like classic. Yeah. Was, and then, um, some of the other songs, like I heard it through their gay find, which is Gladys Knight and the Pips. Mm. It's just nice to see just a bunch of like stuff that I, at least and Aquarius uh, Aquarius yeah Aquarius uh, and, the, and then um just seeing that there was cool for me okay first thing a big fan of um like what's it called sixty seventies music yeah um so 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 already on I already got me on that level but also cool to be uh, this idea of like they restored this footage for fifty years probably been like 
degraded as fuck yeah. and decomposed. But they regraded to like what well, to up res it to um the point where it's like not HD, but like basically HD. It, it was like shockingly good quality. As the fact that they're saying like it just and sat with in audio a, too. A basement. Yeah. Like both video and audio quality was fantastic. But I like how they even they talk about how like they, they had like no real money for this show. So but they wanted to record it. So they planned ahead and they're like, Yeah, we're gonna record it facing west like <laughs> the stage yeah. will face west so there'll be sun the whole time like lighting this up and it's like that's that's great i'm glad to see that they like you know they planned for that <laughs> and it was effective and it and it thankfully they did because it it still looks really good you yeah. know they didn't have any lights and stuff which is kind of crazy like you know it was, it was nice impressive. It, was, it was super cool impressive and it wasn't and, and not even just uh quest love to give props for restoring the footage because that itself is impressive on its own um it's impressive on its own regard yeah, and um, but the the real cool thing is integrating the footage with the cultural context of what was happening during those six weeks. Yes, which yeah. was really cool, and, and the impact of future artists and artists at the time, and why what, what was um, the mindset of the people going in to that concert. Yeah, and also just like the environment and the culture, and even stuff like the the New York City mayor, which is cool. I saw, I was like, oh yeah, he's like I was like I've haven't seen footage for him for a while. Um, and seeing hearing more about him and him being at the festival and being very um amiable towards the Harlem uh, the Harlem community and and also stuff like little snippets of like um the like the fifth dimension seeing footage that you haven't seen before yeah and like, reacting to that that's unique in itself that you don't see another documentary they probably haven't seen this right that was really cool yeah seeing the people who you know, haven't seen this in, you know, like 50 years or whatever, actually sitting down and getting to watch it themselves. Like, you know, footage that like no one else had seen in that time. And it's like, that's crazy. It's like almost like, it's like, imagine 50 years from now, someone shows you footage of a family reunion that you had not s seen since then. It's like, oof, that can be really touching and like, uh, yeah, like super effective. It was great. And the editing is super snappy. It's super snappy. It, was, it has a good flow yeah. to it. Great it's, energy. And it links yeah. up with the music so well, too. <clears throat> It's it's um it's definitely the most it's definitely the most fun I've had watching the documentaries. Yeah, so it's the most fun out of the five. <laughs> yeah, and that's like that's saying something. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, these were <laughs> okay. Let me rephrase it. It's like it's, well, these other documentaries. Most of them are very heavy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll say. So this one has like it's the most energy, you know, and like soul, really, just like being able to see the, the you know. The whole community and stuff go together but also they they do tie it into a lot of like you know again it's still 60s harlem so there's a lot or 60s america really so there's a lot of like racial issues and stuff that are happening at the time and like heavy heavy stuff and they go through all the different assassinations and yeah. stuff like there's a lot going on so uh that, but at the same time it uh like like the spirit of the festival itself there's like that intertwinedness of like energy uh, of like optimism and tragedy and like you know mourning in like energy right. at the same time so that was great it was like a celebration of the festival celebration of the culture celebration of harlem and just and also giving cultural and historical context it did that all really well yeah i didn't and it, even just like, like some of the scenes where like um i oh, what's it called uh, with the drums and stuff in there and then they were like cutting back to like different footage yeah and also showing how history during those six weeks affected them like the uh the, the, the moon landing yeah which is cool and dope um that was really cool to give us to get us into the zeitgeist of what that was at the time and into that mindset. Yeah. Very hyper specific, which I liked. And stuff that and one thing that I love about documentaries that for a documentary it either has to entertain or inform. And something that I can't get out of just reading like a history book or watching yeah. a YouTube channel. Absolutely, yeah. And this one, it's literally not possible to see any of this footage until this one. Yeah. Which was cool and I loved. And uh, it does it does rank highly because of that. Okay, for our next one, flee, flee, which we've already done uh, the whole thing on. Yeah, we've done it like twice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the best international feature film and also the best animated uh, uh, feature film for Oscar episodes. We did, we recommend you guys check it out. We love it. Uh, we will put it on the museum. Uh, just brief synopsis: the film follows um, Amin Nawabi, who on the verge of what's it called marrying um, his husband, shares a story uh, for the first time about his hidden past. Um, fleeing from his home country of Afghanistan and immigrating to Denmark as a refugee. Yeah. And it's animated and it's really cool special. It's the only one of these five, spoiler, it's only one of these five because I already gave a rating before that's in the museum because it's 
very different. Like there's only this and Walter Bashir that's kind of like an animated documentary. And this one even takes a more surrealistic approach. But that's yeah. about it. Any anything you wanna No, I think you pretty much summed it up and yeah, we've spoken about it other times. Go check out those videos. Uh that's not even just a plug. <laughs> yeah. It's no, it just is like plug. it is plug. <laughs> 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 videos or podcast episodes you're listening to yeah, this on a absolutely, podcast yeah. platform. Uh it's like watch the documentary first because it's really great. Um and it's just a yeah, it's definitely worth it. So. And if it won, I wouldn't be sad. I, no, I would absolutely be not. Yeah, it's it's one of my top contenders for sure. Now, right. moving on to Ascension, directed and edited by Jessica Kingdon, who also produced it. Great. And name. also was a cinematographer <laughs> with uh, Nathan Truesdell, who also was the producer. Like I said, a lot of overlap. It's an okay name. Yeah, it's a <laughs> it's huh? no Kingdon. <laughs> What's it called? Well, that's I, I said Jessica Kingdon. No. Yeah, you did. But I was just I just said when you said Jessica Kingdon, I said great name. And then they said uh, and also Nathan Tresdell, and I was like, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> what's it called? Um, and the uh, what's it called? This one is it's a weird it's a weird just to get it, it's um, it's the film follows the Chinese dream through uh what's it, uh, the official synopsis? It follows the Chinese dream through the social classes, prioritizing pro- productivity and innovation, and it in terms of the style, that's a synopsis. Um, it's kind of like Samsara mixed in with. Um, like a speci- like a like an actual documentary or something. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, it's, it's more it's more of a documentary than Samsara. Yeah, but it's also more Samsara than a documentary. Yeah, if you're unfamiliar with Samsara, it's like a it's it's basically like a, just a purely it's almost like visual, a visual novel. Yeah, exactly. Of like just life specifically for humans on Earth and like the way we interact with the world, and it's just yeah purely visual. Um, it's like surreal and, but it's like, you know, grounded of course, cause all of it is like actual footage that took like over the course of years shot around the world. But the point is like this film, uh, kind of takes like a lot of elements of that where it's basically just images of, of, uh, people just living their lives throughout China. Like whether they're working in the industry, like, you know, uh, like assembling phones or like even sex bots or <laughs> sex yeah. dolls at one point or jeans. Yeah, or jeans, or yeah, just like or they're all, all servants different... of rich people, or they're rich people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, shows the people with like training to be butlers, training to be like hospitality stuff, training, and then also yeah, the upper class, the very upper class, who are you know, I like how it's just like there's one scene where they're just sitting around a table just talking about the current state of affairs of China yeah. and like the outlook and the future prospects of China, and it's just like yeah, it's a, uh, it's it's just it's very fascinating. Uh, it's a little eerie at times. Yeah, and but. it's it's this one out of all the documentaries is definitely more of an observational perspective. Yeah, and it passes no judgment really or anything. It's just it's really just showing you exactly what it is. Yeah, this is just what's happening. Not literally, not even any commentary of what's going on. Just like just shows you what's going on, and that's a uh, that's very bold. It's it's I feels like outside of Flea, like the boldest documentary. Yeah. Um, for extra info, apparently Jessica Kingdon, who is a Chinese American um, documentarian or filmmaker, she wanted to make a trilogy of short films focusing on the cycle of productions, consumption, and waste. But she had a hard time funding that short film, so she just made it into like a film instead, combining all those ideas. Yeah. And then she changed it a little bit, where she it's the concept is more about how capitalism affects uh like the people like people in their country. Yeah, she didn't want to specifically top of China, but I think that was just probably a more like closer to home for her right yeah so she focused it on that yeah, and it feels like a fascinating insight into like you know we we hear a lot about china everyone talks about china all the time but it's very fascinating to kind of get more of a of a real grounded real life perspective of like this like is actual like a, footage <laughs> yeah of actual footage and seeing people just living their lives and doing stuff like from actually you know from china this is it like this is just you know no romanticizations or whatever of it it's like this is just what's happening and that's uh yeah it's very fascinating like it's weird it's almost horrifying not horrifying but like sad and um yeah it is a little horrifying when like you contrast the footage of um like the footage of the workers who basically honestly sometimes i'm like automation might be a good thing because yeah. like, like a lot of this is like it shouldn't be done by humans no but right? that's not what makes humans special like doing menial repetitive tasks yeah it's I, like th- like i hope technology actually this is one point i was like this makes a good case for automation where I hope people don't have to do this shit anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And they it's, can <laughs> just do other things more utilized better at a time. Yeah. I mean, I worked at an Amazon facility for a couple months and that was insanely repetitive and mind numbing. And I kind of just hated every second of it. And that's like nowhere near the same level as of, these guys of, of what these people have to deal with. And I like that they show them like they're working and everything. And it's like, 
literally almost like like so it's like pretty much literal sweatshops because like they're yeah. like they're showing them they show the fans like hitting them and they're just like oh god like they're roasting and everything and so uh, yeah Kim Kardashian yeah, which also is a buy the thing by the way in fucking Amazon uh like it, <laughs> it is hot okay it gets fucking hot in those warehouses man it's like it's not cool like they need more a circulation air circulation for these what these Jack factories. Bezos caring about the well-being <laughs> of his workers yeah it's bull okay it's not cool um but yeah for these people again it's like it, they would they would kill for these level of conditions I'm sure like at an Amazon facility here but uh yeah it's it's ridiculous uh, the amount of like stuff they have to do and then even like I don't know even the part when they're speaking about the butlers like they're like yeah you're, like your boss is gonna chew you out he's gonna yell at you he's gonna degrade but you just accept it yeah you just have to accept it just move on you know because that's just what you're that's important that you don't get too angry <laughs> and it makes sense why it's like their livelihood right? yeah again but it's like um that seems like you know really messed up don't you think like but whatever it's kind of just like yeah don't worry about it you just move on just you know you can get angry and curse them out but like just not in front of them like you know <laughs> it's honest it's honest thing. yeah it's like at least they're being like straightforward with Dude, them somebody should show kim kardashian this fucking documentary oh, because remember her thing is like yeah, you know how to be successful get off your ass and work fucking hard yeah. nobody wants to work nowadays okay kim kardashian say that to <sighs> all the chinese uh, factory workers who are females yeah yeah like they're making your iphone bitch like yeah. seriously, okay, not not calling you a bitch, but yeah. to be honest, that's a pretty bitchy thing. <laughs> that's a pretty shitty thing to say. It's a really shitty thing to like, say. Like, like there's a Travis Knight who is the son of uh, Phil Knight, the CEO. He is also the um, founder of Leica Animation Studios, very successful in his own right. Yeah, and he's also a musician, etc. And people are like, "How did you become so successful?" He was kind of like aware. It's like, look, I I got to be aware. I come from a very privileged background, and I yeah. had all the resources. I worked hard. I admit that my background helped me quite immensely. So it's, mm-hmm. it's, some, it's a mix of hard work and luck. I'm not, and I'm like and I'm kind of like that one's like uh, this kind of tone deaf. <laughs> like when someone says stuff like just work hard and they're like from a rich background and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like I'm sorry. Where did where did your money and privilege, you know, your wealth really come from? Like from your your family. And to be fair, like uh, I mean, she does work hard, but it's yeah. also like you got to understand that you came from a much better standing. Yeah. And other people who like try, try to start out. Try, try starting off like, you know, just uh, like imagine your first job was, you know, you're working at Burger King and that's where you had to like basically start from there. <laughs> like start from scratch. It's really, much harder it. to yeah. be a billionaire. It's incredibly stuff. hard to get you reach your level of success and status, you know, from that. But whatever. And man. we're all hustling. And I get I get what she was trying to say, but it was very tone deaf. Yeah. Yeah. So so I think to open her eyes, she should watch Ascension. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, also, I think I think this should open a lot of eyes. Yeah, yeah. it's like I'm. Yeah, I'm all for working hard. Honestly, yes, yes, like, working I'm, hard I've, is great. I've worked very hard in my life, but it's like that hustle culture can be extremely toxic, and again, tone deaf and just like ridiculous at times. Where it's like you don't, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's like yeah. So whatever. Anyway, we're not here to talk about Kardashian. The, the, the point is moving on to the next documentary, Attica. Which Attica. I'll say this. Okay, so I'll just say this synopsis first. Um, and by, it's it's directed and produced by Tracy Curry and Stanley Nelson. Stanley Nelson Jr. is also a MacArthur fellow documentary filmmaker, also known for making a lot of um, exemplary documentaries about the uh, African-American experience in the U.S. It's cool. I liked it. This is a subject matter. The subject matter is about a 50 year look back at the 1971 Attica uprising, which is about like prisoners who, um, you know, prisoners who took over the Attica prison in New York. I, I, I was about to go <laughs> and last time I went to New York, but I just couldn't fit it. It was I had to choose between New Haven or a- the Attica thing. You were going to visit Attica? Yeah, because, but then Leia didn't want to go. Oh. Yeah. Why? I mean, I'm just curious. I mean, I know this is obviously a very, it was like, cool. Like, I, I knew about this history yeah. because of uh, from AP government or AP history. And I just thought like, yeah. it's pretty insane. This, the event that happened and the fact that they were able to hold this for like six days and stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, and also just like all the inmates that died. Yeah, and how it led to a lot of prison reform. So it was just cool. Even to, guards too. Like it's crazy. Like I was just cool to see. Like, is it going to be available and whatever? But you know, it just mm. didn't happen. It's still open. Do you know? I I don't know. That's what I was I was, I was going to see. But I think I think it might be open for like historical reasons or something. Yeah, but the or there's some type of like might have been shut no no. Down. I think the prison is gone. Or um, well, like I said, correct me if I'm wrong. But I yeah. am like let's I'll do the re- I'll look it up right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, for this one, it's like I said, it's really well made. It's really well done, really well executed, and having the interviews with the the inmates who were there, and even the victims of the hostages that were shot down by the police. Yeah, 
was really effective. But there's nothing new here that I learned that I couldn't have seen or impacted from previously assembled footage, articles, or textbooks. Uh, yeah. Like, it's kind of like each, and then, and it's fine. Like I said, like this is, I, I wouldn't put this on such a high pedestal if it's just a documentary, right? Yeah. But this is an Oscar nominated documentary. And each one of these, except Writing with Fire, but <laughs> um, each one of these documentaries do something new with the documentary genre or try something. Yeah. And or highlight something that we like, like, like Summer Soul literally could have not seen before. Yeah. But this one is probably the safest out of, except Writing with Fire, <laughs> hmm. um, of the five documentaries. It's really well done. I really liked it. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I, but yeah, I'll say I, I I liked it more than I think you did. Uh, like I was I was really compelled by the story. Like really, just kind of drawn in right away. Um, I had heard about Attica before, but again, I think just in this documentary format, and it was done. I think pretty exceptionally well. Like it was, yeah, it was a little more kind of by the books kind of documentary, but done like you know in a very good way. Like it's just it was kind of just done like uh just on a technical level, done very. Expertly. Yeah, it's, it's very efficient, but I think okay, and I think one thing I was looking forward to when they said they're gonna Attica. Yeah. Like things I didn't know about. Okay, it's like there's let's go into the major individuals involved. Like both from the non prisoner and prisoner side. Or yeah. the prison okay, I I put on the Chi Chi non prisoner both, but the second one's just prisoners. Mm -hmm. Like the prisoners that I don't know that much about was is like uh Donald Don Noble, particularly Frank Big Black Smith. Yeah. Like I was surprised that he's mentioned, but they never focus like that much on him hmm. and he's like one of the integral parts of the uprising like people talk to him like he's like the don he's like they look to him as they look to him as a respected figure in the uprising yeah i mean and, i do mention that but yeah yeah but like instead but like not but we don't we don't get too much he, insight into he's not how very he was. much focused on or anything yeah, yeah. and i'm kind of like like for me i think that was such a missed opportunity right because mm -hmm. actually the things that i don't know that much about and is not as mentioned yeah. is is the individual players involved in their perspective so that's why like you know stuff with the stuff that was cool which like herman schwartz the civil rights lawyer was there um and clarence b jones there there they were the best in my opinion my favorite interviewees because they were just like they you know they offer more insight into the stuff that i didn't know about felt incredibly honest i'll say yeah and you know seeing the other um former attica prisoners was cool and stuff like that but there's stuff like I would have liked to see more insight that I don't get from a history book. Right. Mm. And that, that was a missed opportunity, like the individual prisoners and their story and how this, I almost, almost feel like as if like, I know like there was like the OJ documentary or like, um, Oh, the one with the Michael, Michael Jordan documentary that came out not too long ago. On oh Netflix. yeah. 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 That was like a part series. Like I feel like maybe this could have been something like that. And we flushed like into each, more of each day. Yeah. Stuff is passing by. Yeah. Like so, there, I felt like it was for me, it, it was, and it had a good pace. I get why, you know, like there, like there was a lot that was missing that could have been done. That's not been in the other stuff. And also some missed opportunities. Like when Bobby seal came, Bobby seal and William Kunster, how, how much are you fair, uh, familiar of the Chicago seven? The Trial of Chicago 7, other than the Aaron Sorkin movie? Just, like, really a lot of the basic stuff. So not, like, super familiar. It's, like, a lot of, honestly, like, surface-level stuff. Yeah, but Bobby Seale... So, Will and Kunster was the big Chicago 7 lawyer. Very famous. Yeah. And Bobby Seale was actually one of... I mean, he, he refused to get def defended by uh, Will and Kunster, but they had a history together, mm. right? And they, they were there around the same time. So, I was like, okay, so I was curious, like, you know, when Bobby Seale just went there for five minutes and left. Yeah, he just showed up and just bounced yeah and i was like okay so what how what how's william Kunster, who's like a big proponent in trying to negotiate with the um attica prisoners like what's he gonna say about this right or yeah. what's his perspective on this but they don't they don't mention it at all and i'm kind of like that's a missed opportunity like i was, was he not the dude with the mutton chops or <laughs> yeah 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 well I, they do show him speaking a little bit no but they don't speak about bobby's like why bobby's like the bobby no, Seal incident yeah they really kind of brush over i think if anything it that's seemed a big like, thing yeah if anything it felt more like it was like again obviously very much focused on like the prisoner's perspective right and the fact that he just shows up says a few words and then leaves and then they're just like that was incredibly disappointing and they just don't and i, I think it would have been interesting to again get into it's more the ramifications why. of like because he's also one of the biggest proponents 
of uh, ref- of prison reform. Yeah. But to have a guy who was the biggest, he was also super huge, second in command next to underneath Fred Hampton oh. at the Black Panther Party to come yeah, in yeah. and just like, and just kind of blow them off. Yeah. Like, what does that do to the prisoners? What does it do to their psychology? What does that do to their mindset? Well, I mean, they do kind of touch on that. That's it. That's, no, no, it's just like, it's disappointing. And then they move on. Yeah. I mean, they they just say that like, you know, but, that was it. Like, it just, it felt like it was the, because they do mention beforehand how like there, a lot of them were reading his, his books and stuff yeah. and they were like getting No, they under, they, they talked it. about how they were like amped up for his visit. Yeah. But then they don't talk too much about the ramifications afterwards. Yeah. It's just I disappointing. So. And that's it. That's I mean, it. I, mean I feel like, because they, they were like rushing towards the, the big police raid. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm kind yeah. of like, there's a lot of things in between. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, if I, okay, for me, okay, I, I know like, if it's, if it's your gateway drug into Attica, this is a really good gateway drug. Mm-hmm. But for me, who's, who's kind of like known about this for a while, it felt like something I've seen before and then they didn't give me anything new and there was opportunities in the in-betweens that I felt like they skimped over, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I agree. This would probably make a great like mini-series, again, because it does take th- uh, place over a few days. There's... Again, there's tons of stuff that's happening from like, but again, like the prisoners' perspectives, the guards, like the whatever the police are trying to do, even like the press, how they're covering it, which they do, they do a lot of that, but it does kind of feel a little skipped, skimmed over a bit. So yeah, I could see that, but yeah, I don't know. I I I, I was very compelled by the documentary again, like everything that kind of was going on. Like I was surprised. I was surprised they had like the audio recordings of like the the conversations between uh, Rockefeller and Nixon. I was yeah. like, what? Like that's crazy. Um, Nixon just I'm really surprised. You know, he's a piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, the same. And so is Rockefeller. He's just he's a bitch, pretty much. He was just like he was just like yeah, whatever you want, Rockefeller, or whatever you want, Nixon. Sure, well, I shouldn't go down there. And he's like, no, no, like it, it's oh god. Uh, it's Even hysterical. that one was like that's that's a fascinating angle too, with about like you know the general aspect of prison reform and yeah, and the, and then Nixon's hard stance on law and order. Yeah, but that one also I felt was surface level at best exploration yeah yeah it's, it's like, kind of like uh yeah the, this is what law and order means and like that's kind of it like let's skim over a little bit yeah honestly you know weird thing is i would actually love to see even if it's not a doc i mean because doc i think now this documentary came out the documentary series is off the table yeah and um in a weird way i would actually love to see if somebody made like a like a mini series on this yeah yeah, yeah i think so i like, would love that, to that see. would be cool yeah um fascinating and like you said there's probably tons of ground you can cover uh again each day as things were kind of worsening what were like i because i did want to know more stories of like what was happening inside the yard exactly because like, they, they do talk about like how the each cell block and like they kind of nominated their own leaders and stuff like i would want to know more about the different blocks and the different leaders and, and the what's inner going politics on. of that working yeah and the fact that they do mention they're like this was a prison so there were like some sociopath dude like there were dangerous people that were involved in there like it's like yes a lot of them were fighting for you know just basic humanitarian rights which is completely understandable but there were also some men in there that you don't want to be sleeping next to yeah. you know and then they also brushed over and and also i one thing i just didn't like is the kind of manipulation of some of the facts where like because okay. in real life and they only mentioned like they said oh 29 people died and there was like the, the yeah the correctional officers but in real life it's like 43 died and i get it it's like i mean technically i think 29 died in the police raid and yeah. some of the thing but then they kind of like skimmed over the larger statistics and and I and then they they did that purposely to kind of make the point that yeah police did a bad job there and they yeah. did I get that but what's the point of hiding the overall statistics or something like that yeah which but would would be for, like 40, 43 died uh, thirty three prisoners uh, ten correctional officers thirty nine were killed in the raid yeah. yeah but it's kind of like and it's like I get why what he was going for like it's not necessarily it is is manipulation of facts but they're still facts yeah but. It's it's a it's a nitpick. It's whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's whatever. It's not even that bad. It's not even like he's lying, but but it's a minor nitpick on my part. Um, yeah, yeah. honestly, look, I would love to see this. Like, oh, I almost see this like kind of like Oz type of series or something. Yeah, uh, but I, like I would love to see everything. Like the the thing that I was disappointed by uh, personally was like I wanted to see more of like the build up of what led to the exactly. The yeah, that's raid. another thing because it just kind of happens and they kind of just explain like oh it kind of just happened and it was from more prisoners' perspectives again who were just regular prisoners but there has to be like a build up a move something that just like sparks this because it doesn't just happen you know yeah it's, but it's know. like they talk about it after like what caused it after it already happened and it kind of diminishes the effect yeah a little bit yeah so 
I don't know. That's that's the thing that's holding me from from this loving this too much. And the last one, documentary is Riding with Fire. Look, um, what's it called? What's it called? It's uh, like I, I I only happened to watch this by accident a yeah. long time ago, and I didn't watch it for this episode. It just happened. My friend had a Sundance pass. Uh, Riding with Fire. Um, and it's hard, you guys can't watch it until after the Oscars come out, which is annoying. Which is why I didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. So <laughs> this, this is the one, the one free one, pass. Yeah, the yeah. one time I did not watch. A film ever. This is the only time it's ever uh-huh, happened. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and this is also the um, the last place. Riding with Fire tells the story of Kabara Laharia, the only news agency in India run by Dalit, an oppressed cast of women. Armed with smartphones, these women journalists report from some of the most difficult regions of the country, risking everything to speak truth to power, led by chief reporter Mira and her feisty understudy. Crime reporter Sunita, the film bears witness to the wit, intelligence, and compassion of these journalists and confronting of the most urgent stories of this time. Set in the backdrop of an increasingly polarized world, Riding with Fire journeys with Mira and her band of sisters for five years as they break traditions on the front lines of India's uh, biggest issues and within the confines of their homes, redefining what it truly means to be powerful. That's from PBS. That pretty much sums up my <laughs> like what the, uh, the, the actual documentary is. It's fine. It's very powerful, and it does uh, highlight a certain... Um, marginalized uh, aspect of society and also even just like um how journalism and or just you know prevailing the the nature of truth survives in even the most um off forgotten or um subjugated or marginalized aspects of society so that part is powerful um i this last time i've seen this was like in january of 2021 uh. so it's like a very long time ago um so i don't have that much more to offer than that it's it, it was it was well done it's my least favorite of the five i was really surprised i thought you know once again the thailand cave rescue thing was gonna get in there mm. and that was but whatever um i recommend seeing it i'm i'm gonna i'm actually gonna probably buy it after the oscars and just to you know fresh up my memory on it and just you're gonna buy it or rent it or buy it or oh, something okay. like that so this yeah. would be on a shelf oh uh, no no well it's a digital release so yeah because it's not streaming anywhere that's true yeah, yeah. I, I I like literally they're forcing me to like get it on the show. <laughs> it's like impossible not to. Yeah, it's okay. P- fucking PBS. You okay, know, so do you want to move into ratings? Let's move into ratings. Summer yeah. of Soul, um, on the shelf. I think is exemplary, super fun documentary, uh, one of a kind. Literally because you can't fucking see this anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I, it's I, one of the best concert documentaries I've ever seen. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, yeah, concert documentaries I think can be kind of pretty tough. Yeah, because it's like you either just like you're just showing the concert and it's just like yeah, or everything that led up to it. I don't know. I think it just it had the best of what you can do with the concert documentary, showing the effects before and after of it, the cultural impact of it, and everything that's like happening. Great music and everything else. It was cool. Like I was watching this like at my parents' house, and then my dad saw it and he's like, "What is this?" And I was like, "Oh, this is like." It kind of explained to him. He's like, "This is this would be great to watch." And then he went to go watch it. He's like, "I was like, I don't want to interrupt you watching it," so he went to go watch it nice, <laughs> nice. elsewhere because he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go watch this." This is the so. only uh, documentary of the five. And by the way, Cinema Score is the actual only legit like audience tracking rating score because they actually like like as audiences are getting out of theaters, like thousands yeah. and thousands of them. Like they interview them and ask them to give a rating and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And this is the only cin- cinema score out of like almost very rare documentaries, and out of these five, to get an A plus. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah, I'm gonna put this one. Uh, uh, I'm gonna say probably premium streaming yeah. for myself. Uh, yeah. And we got Flea. We already Flea. said in the museum. For yeah, both. it's in the yeah. museum. It's fantastic. Ascension. Uh, you know what? This is weird. I don't know. I really liked it, but I can't put it on the shelf because I don't know if I'll be watching it again. For me, it's premium. These are premium streaming streaming ads. It's weird. It's like, like I, you know, I already compared it a lot to Samsara, and it's like, I feel like Samsara is like, again, they're very different. They're very different the subject though. matter is different, but I'm like, man. It's, it's like, also hyper focus. Yes. Yes. So it's like, but on this one, it's like, I feel like just the way that Samsara was shot, like, it kind of puts it over the top. And this one was like, it was shot well, of course, but I was, it was a lot of times it felt. Feel very flat, I'll say. Like, and again, well, I don't know. I, I think that's also kind of the point too, right? Yeah, yeah kind of like the very, dreary, repetitive nature of. Yeah, yeah. It's like I don't know. I just felt like it could have. Uh, I'm very I curious to see know. where Jessica yeah. Kingdon is going to go in the future. Like, I feel like I, I really maybe with a different see subject what, matter, it could be more interesting. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this one is. It's like it was good because it was limited by. I, I, for me, I think it was limited by the subject, but subject matter. 
That's you know, yeah, because hyper focus. That's fair. I don't know. I feel like there's still more you could have done with it. Because like, like just the one she was available. No, I don't know. Because there's some like that one shot with the um the water park and stuff. Yeah. Oh no no like, that's yeah. Like, that's there, yeah, there's shot. some great stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it seems like like the skill was there. It's just yeah. probably like what was available to her. And also we we got we can't forget that it's very hard to that's film. fair I, I think yeah. again it's like again i'm trying to it's like i'm comparing it to samsara which was which like, is, just is a impossible. gorgeous fucking yeah. film yeah it's a gorgeous movie so and it was also filmed over like and also very different too that, that has yeah. a whole different purpose it's basically like here let's try to film the most gorgeous things we can that humans have ever done all over the yeah. world <laughs> well this one is like I'm, let's just try to film yeah like, basically and also in interesting lives ways. yeah, yeah and in interesting ways okay so yeah for me i'm gonna put this one uh like uh, like, like okay, it, for, like stream. for a number, you want to you, you want to get number ratings and okay, for personally for me, this is probably be streaming with ads, but number rating will be like a nine because I actually don't know what else you could do better. I, with I it. don't want to do two different ratings. You know, two different <laughs> ratings. I'll, I'll do no. it for just this one because it is to explain my side. Like technically, okay. yeah, I don't think this could have done any better. Yeah, because it's just like at, at least for somebody who's I mean I know you visit China too. Yeah, but have, as a kid too, it's like I haven't been in China for a long, and also from what our kids. It's kind of, I think, like the best you could do, also with the restrictions. Yeah, it's been like, I think it la- I visited China like ten years ago. I want to say. Yeah, and it's only got and more restricted then. Yeah, and it's uh, it is so it was fascinating being like this is more what it looks like now, uh, so it is, yeah, it is very interesting. Like they were um, even looking at the camera at some points, like you know what I mean? Like I like yeah. they were like, fuck, I'm getting recorded. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. That part was like again, it's very, I think it's bold. That's why I say like it's one of the boldest ones here. Uh, because of the way that it's shot and just like edited and everything, and the even just the fact that it's like it's in you know oh you know I didn't even talk about China that. right now <laughs> that one shot where um it was a model and she walks off screen but it focuses on the 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 farmer yeah oh yeah that yes. was one of my favorite parts oh that was fantastic yeah, see, so I'm thinking like there yes. was the skill on the eye it's just yeah. probably like yeah you know what yeah. uh I, I'll put it on premium streaming honestly this is like something I think I would want to show somebody it feels like a good insight inside inside a con uh inside of china right now and just yeah it's very fascinating and i and i'm just giving it a, again a lot of props for being bold so yeah yeah anyway so let's move on hey, attica um for me it's oh bargain bin is rough so well I, i'm not saying it's so also streaming. Tripping, i say it's streaming with that it's really well made okay like number okay i'll give a number rating for this one um it, it's like a stream it's like an eight out of ten it's really fucking good documentary but personally yeah. for me I would like if streaming with ads. I wouldn't like subscribe to it. Like I would like it's on Showtime, but uh, I wouldn't renew my Showtime for Attica. Uh, honestly, I I kind of want this on the shelf. Like I really oh that's fine. I that's that was cool. really good. I, I this is something I would want to like uh like just see in the future. Like show somebody or something. Like just like this is like this is very powerful. Uh, especially with the ending again. Like it's it's graphic and hard to watch at times, but I think done very well it could have done it could have been done a lot better and i think yeah it is a good window into like something that uh like a like a docu-series or something else that could just really kind of get more out of this topic but i think uh fantastic for like you know what it is so yeah and writing with fire oh, he's the only one i can't yeah i can't <laughs> yeah, it's uh, say anything <laughs> for me uh stream with that yeah. okay and that's it Thank you guys for another episode of Half a Clue Movie Review. Another Oscar special. We'll yeah. have more to come. It's going to be a very busy week this week. Wait, did we give a prediction of which one we think is going to win? Oh, it's all, we, we said it earlier. Oh, Summer, Summer of Soul. Soul. Yeah, because we're going in order. Yeah. Okay. You're going to say Summer of Soul, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's just a, it's a bookie favorite to win. Yeah. And the other the, the other one that's going to be Dark Horse is Flea. I was going to say, yeah. can I, I, I think you Flea's going to win? Yeah, I think Flea's going to sneak that's in That's fine. That's, that's fair. That's my second choice. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm assuming your second choice is Summer of Soul. Yeah. Who's gonna win? Yeah, just because again of yeah. all the popularity and everything that's going on right now, and it just makes sense. It's it's also it's, it's a also very the well more done documentary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely yeah more. But I, I yeah, I'm I'm saying Flea. I think could sneak in and take it. Yeah, I think that's my yeah. prediction. I, I feel like it's it's closer. It's right if, there because yeah. you know Flea's nominated for three. I think of the three, he'll probably win documentary. Yeah, as the best because it's not gonna yeah. win animated because yeah. that's a Kanto. Yeah, and it's not. No, no, there's zero percent chance to win international feature film. Yeah, that's, that's gonna drive, be, my, drive car. my car. Yeah. yeah, so I think this is where Flea will get its day. So. Yeah, yeah, that's my that's my uh, prediction. I really hope so. Thank you guys for another episode of Half a Clue Movie Review, and goodbye. Bye.